Hello there. Today I want to talk about five productivity dysfunctions for programmers. So when you're feeling unproductive, why could that be and what could you do about that? The first step is to figure out that you are unproductive right now. For me, there are a few behaviors that I know show that I'm unproductive. The first is uh, I'm staring at code for hours without typing. So I, I, I fail to actually enter something into an editor. Another one might be I do something that is actually not programming, although I actually said I'm not going to program for a few hours. Like I'm checking whether there is a new PR for me to review every 10 minutes. Or maybe I'm uh, going uh, to Slack every 10 minutes, every five minutes and check whether there's a new message and then you see whether that's a message that's uh, relevant for you. So you, you set down to program, but you're not actually doing it. It's not like you shouldn't review PRs because of course that's part of what you do as a programmer, um, but you, that's not what you wanted to do and you still do it. Or you do something that is completely unrelated. You watch YouTube videos while you're programming. I guess when you're watching YouTube videos, except for this one, of course, this one you could watch at any time, it's kind of lying to yourself that you could be able to program at the same time. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, you do you, but to me, that's a clear sign of I'm not productive right now. I'm not making progress. And finally, if at the end of the day, I feel that I didn't get anything done and I somehow still feel empty and exhausted and it's been a long day and I feel like I, I just struggled the entire day there's no no progress then clearly i'm unproductive so let's talk about these dysfunctions the first one is the uh, i don't know where to start dysfunction so you know the problem space you know what you're supposed to be doing but you don't know where to start implementing it and that's why you don't get started that's why you don't make progress for me often the problem that i see in this case is that the thing that you're actually trying to build is way too big. You just you just can't fit it all into your head and you don't find the right angle to approach it. The best advice that I have for that case is subdivide the problem that you're trying to solve. Cut it down and build a small but crappy approximation. So um, always start with something that you can do, something that's actionable, something that yields a defined result. And you can ignore everything else for the minute because once you get to the place where you're no longer trying to build the first version, but you're actually iterating, it's much easier. Iteration is always going to be easier. Improving something that's bad is easier than building the bad thing in the first place or trying to build a good thing. So just build a bad thing and then improve it. That's the way that you can actually make progress in these situations. For games that might be implement a core game loop. I can tell you that the difference for games that I finished and for games that I haven't finished was always whether or not I started by implementing the core game loop and getting to, to something that I can do repeatedly. For a library, it might be writing a test and start from there and fill in the blanks or uh, write the first function of the API, even though you have no idea how to um, implement the backend. For an application, for me, it helps to just get the simplest user interaction working. Like, okay, a user should be able to click that thing. Okay, let's make it make it possible that the user click that thing. The thing doesn't have to do anything. That might be the next uh, step. But just get something working and then iterate. And there's something that you need to get working. It will be bad. It will be a crappy approximation of the really crappy approximation of the real thing. But it's an approximation. And now you can iterate. For me, it helps to, to put all of these steps that I need to do while iteration to a to-do list. But this is a dangerous advice, I think, because mm, with a to-do list like Trello or even Jira, these come with so much fanfare and you, you can get really stuck just writing to-do lists and feel productive by moving cards around in these to-do lists. And that's not actually helping you to solve your problem. It's okay to have some kind of a reward when you, you finish one of these, these actionable tasks, but I personally prefer to actually have just a text file where I can just delete lines or move lines from to do to done, because that way I don't spend so much time doing something that's pseudo productive. So that's the first dysfunction. I don't know where to start. The second dysfunction that I see is the, I have no idea what I'm doing dysfunction. 
So typically that looks like this. You're dropped into the middle of a code base you don't know and you need to implement a new feature and nothing makes sense to you, nothing. And you're just afraid to touch anything. Like, will it break if I touch that thing? And I don't know what happens if I call that function. So the problem that I see is you worry that you need to understand everything and cannot get started at all. And besides the first advice of just making a crappy approximation, my advice would be, yeah, if you call a function, if you have to interact with something, that part you probably need to understand. So how about you start by seeking help? Talk to someone familiar with this area of the code base. And they would probably appreciate you reaching out because people actually kind of like to be asked interesting questions that they can answer. Like, not too many, of course, and the right amount of them, but most people just like to be helpful and smart and feel needed. So uh, that is always a good first step if you are in this place where you have no idea of what you're doing. Uh, and then, of course, take it take it as a serious problem. Set aside some time to actually get to know what you're doing, get to know the code base, and just accept and communicate that you'll take longer. That's there's no shame in that. Quite the opposite. It will it's just a good investment. Um, the ways that I would recommend doing that is stepping into code. So in uh, most editors, you can press some key to go to the definition of a function. Do that frequently. Read a lot of code. Look at tests, look at previous PRs in that area, run debuggers, study samples. There's, there's so many different ways to do that. Usually there's also some documentation or training material or videos about that or something. And uh, this might be a good, good way to ease yourself in and just don't be afraid to break or touch anything. Just experiment. There's version control for you to not break anything. And uh, because you already accepted that it will take longer, you don't actually have to work on the implementing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, but you can first get the roadblock out of the way, the roadblock that you're afraid of touching anything. It's a real problem. Take it as that and solve it as that. Now, the third one is uh, the, how am I ever going to be able to do this dysfunction? This usually looks like this. You sit down to program, but it makes you feel really bad. It causes anxiety and you just don't know how to start without immediately getting to the place where you think, oh, I'm going to fail. You're in this mindset where you just don't think that you can do it. The problem is quite obviously that you don't trust in your abilities to solve the problem. And I think this happens to everyone at some point. Best advice that I can give is be easy on yourself. Why, why does it happen to everyone? Well, it happens to everyone because there are plenty of unsolvable problems out there. Like most problems, statistically speaking, that you're going to draw up in a co theoretical computer science uh, uh, lingo are actually unsolvable. If I give you a random problem, it's probably going to be unsolvable. You're not going to be able to write an algorithm for that. It's just reality. And that's not your fault. Luckily, in, in the things that we usually interact with, we can often just throw away the unsolvable parts. Mm. So... By explaining the problem to someone else, you can first of see, is, is, is that me just not seeing the thing? And uh, you can also see what whether they interpret the problem differently. Maybe they see a solution because they took some constraints. And that's actually, from my perspective, the right way to deal with this. Just try to solve a simpler version of the problem. If you don't think that you can solve the full thing, then um, convince yourself that you can solve a simpler version because clearly you are not comfortable with trying to solve the full thing. And the nice part is if you solve the simple version, maybe on the way you realize that you don't actually need to solve the full problem anyway. So that is, it's a nice shortcut in a way. You can convince yourself that you can actually do something about this problem and you can learn a little bit more about the problem, whether it's actually worth solving in full. Number four is uh, the programming is not the solution dysfunction. This is actually for me personally, the thing I run into the most. So what that looks like is uh, you sit there, you program, um, a program and program and program for hours, but you make no progress. How is that even possible? Well, the problem is that you don't really know what you're trying to do at all. Like you don't know what the goal is. There is no forward. And because there's no direction of forward, there's no notion of progress because 
well, whatever way you go, that's not forward and moving forward would be progress. So yeah, tough luck. And in these situations, the only thing that you can do from my perspective is to stop programming. Take the time to actually design what you want to do. You have to make decisions. So for example, you could think about what should your program even look like? Is this a command line program? Okay, that's a constraint. So just start there. Can you sketch up a GUI? What is the user interaction going to be like? It's not about um, the, the, how's the code going to look like? No, 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 no. What are you actually trying to do with that program? Can you write down the precise API for the problem that you'd want to solve or a version of that? Just, just figure out what problem am I actually trying to solve? And that also means you're going to close some doors. You need to understand what problems aren't you going to solve. Because when you spend so much time um, programming but make no, no real progress, what have you been doing? You've been building stuff that just doesn't solve the problem because probably at least that's what happens to me. You don't want to make a decision about not solving another problem. So you write something that, that doesn't commit to anything and that's not going to help. So step back, close some doors and understand what you don't need to solve for. And a brilliant way to do that is to talk to someone who's a designer or user. For example, specifically when I write games, the best thing that I can do is talk to somebody who's passionate about games and has lots of ideas about, oh, we could do this. And the thing that they're going to propose is completely utopian. It's never going to happen but they can at least formulate a clear goal, a clear purpose, a clear thing that they want. It, and then you can focus on that thing. And that's what is actually making a good designer, I think, that they can tell you th this is actually the thing that we're going to do. Of course, there's always going to be some wiggle room. And again, you're not going to get a precise version of that, but get an understanding of the problem that you're solving. And then actually you can get back to programming. In my experience, once you have a clear idea in your mind, and that's also something that we talked in, about in an earlier slide, the, the idea of, hey, I want to enable this specific user interaction, building this specific user interaction is usually not hard. It usually doesn't take that long. And all of a sudden you make progress because it's visible, because you know what you're trying to achieve. Now, the fifth and final dysfunction is the I know what to do, but I'm not willing to do it dysfunction. This is also one that I suffer from sometimes. So you try to program, but you can't get yourself to write the thing you need to write. You know what you need to write. You just don't do it. You just see the problems that all of the things that, that you're creating will cause. And the problem here is clearly that you don't believe in the solution that you're building. You don't believe it's a good thing. You th think it shouldn't be done. My advice in this case is, articulate why you don't believe in it, then either face it or design around it. So designing around it usually means building a different solution, building a solution that you can actually believe in. I'd, I'd wager that if you are in this situation, you're probably building something that you didn't come up with, because if you come up with something, um, either the problem is such that there is no good solution and you have to settle for a crappy one, then tough luck, you probably still have to do it um, if it's a problem worth solving. Um, but if it's your own solution, you better believe in it. So if it's not your own solution and you don't believe in it, then maybe you should build your own solution. Uh, another great way to, to deal with this doubt is to talk to the person who thinks it's a good idea. Figure out what, what different understanding of the problem space do you even have? Why? Why don't they see the problems that you're seeing? And that, that probably doesn't help you to, um, to feel better about it, but it gives you a better understanding of the problem space. Maybe they see, oh yeah, that's totally a problem, but actually this is not a relevant problem because uh, this is something that uh, we will never show to the user. And you thought, of course, we're going to show that to the user. Just So these conversations are important. And once you face that doubt, you'll be in a better place to actually start building something. And that, by the way, is also why it's important to give engineers a problem to solve and not a solution to implement, because otherwise, how are they going to believe in the solution that, you build, that they're building? And if they just are filled with doubt, they're not going to be productive. So 
These are the five dysfunctions that I described and it's not an exhaustive list, it's just what I came up with. I don't know where to start, I have no idea what I'm doing. How am I ever going to be able to do this? Programming is not the solution. And I know what to do, but I'm not willing to do it. And for me, why it's important to, to, to list these dysfunctions is because it's, I think everybody has something that, that's like a characteristic dysfunction for them or multiple, where when you are unproductive, you can, uh, look at a list like this and say, okay, what problem am I actually facing? What's really making me unproductive? And for me, at least, the two that are always happening are four and five. Like not knowing what problem to solve is when I build a game, that's like usually the problem. At work, not so much. Um, or the, uh, I don't know what I'm, I, I know what I have to do, but I'm not willing to do that. That happens at work to me sometimes. And uh, these two things, yeah, you have to be able to identify them because if you can't identify them, you won't be able to solve your productivity problem. And it's not just that you have to be able to identify them. It's also a good idea to tell people around you, hey, if I'm unproductive, this is probably a reason for why I'm unproductive because then they can help you. If you have a manager or a lead or a friend or depending on what you work on, if it's a game, if it's open source, if it's at a job, Tell the people around you because then they can help you out of it. So a few final words. If all else fails, all else fails. Um, like there, there are deeper reasons for why you might be unmotivated or unproductive. And I think if this has been going on for some time, maybe take a vacation and do something else. First thing, it's always a good idea to sometimes rest. The second thing is sometimes uh, you just need to trick yourself into programming, like look for outdated to-dos in the code base and just start deleting them and make a PR. Find a way to delete code. Find a way to, to do something. Just get your foot into the door. These things are only pseudo-productive because really they are not the things that you set out to do, but sometimes that helps. But this is really, this is just a scattershot method if you have no idea of what your actual problem is. Um, and if you're facing long-term motivation issues, you should take it seriously. And make sure that it doesn't impact your private life or the other way around, come from a problem that sits in your private life. Maybe you're suffering from, from depression. Maybe you're suffering because you've lived under COVID for two years now and you haven't seen a lot of people. There are a lot of valid reasons. And if you can identify them, that's, that's a bigger problem to solve. And I think in this case, none of these things that I told you really, really are going to solve the problem. They might help you tackle the symptoms, but take it seriously. And finally, sometimes it just helps to check whether you're still where you want to be. Are you still in the role you were excited about when you joined your company? Are you still uh, excited about the project that you undertook in your free time? Are you still excited about the open source project that you contributed to? So yeah, that wraps it up. I hope it uh, was helpful. Um, please let me know if you think I missed a dysfunction or if you can see yourself in one of these dysfunctions. I certainly do. And yeah, thank you for listening.